I want to welcome everybody to the Strand. Um, my name is Nancy Bass Wyden. I am an owner, along with my dad, which is right here. His name is Fred Bass. Yeah. So it's going to be really fun right now. Um, we're here to celebrate our 85th birthday. I'm not 85. Um, my, uh, for a little bit of history, my grandfather, Benjamin Bass, founded the Strand along a stretch of, um, of the street along 4th Avenue in 1927. There were, at that time, 48 independent bookstores, and today we're the sole survivor from that time. 85 and still independent. So I'm absolutely delighted to introduce the innovative, gifted, dapper, hilarious Andy Cohen. Uh, yay! <laughs> Under Andy's reign as Executive Vice President of Development and Talent for Bravo, um, he has produced such addictive and popular shows as the Real Housewives franchise, which I watch, <laughs> and uh, Top Chef. <laughs> it's a secret, um, well, secret passion for somebody who's supposed to be so bookish, but... Um, you can also catch him on his uh, show Bra on Bravo, Watch What Happens Live, and they've, um, we're auctioning off six tickets for the show. It's a real perk here. So everybody make sure that they get, um, get a, raff a free raffle ticket. And on top of this all, you know, we're honoring Andy and his book, Most Talkative, his memoir, which I don't know, how do you find the time to do all this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so I just want to say, you know, before we, Jessica, we're, before we, um, before I introduce, officially introduce Andy and have him come to the stage, I want to speak the truth. Um, I know we're here to celebrate the Strand's birthday party, but I have an ulterior motive. Um, I have an idea, um, which we, we, we think is going to be a, take the country by storm. It's going to be a little stop different. Thinking about movie <laughs> it's a little bit more bookish. It's a little bit more offbeat. Um, welcome the housewives of the Strand Bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> so they can talk philosophy, they can talk Shakespeare, they can run a house, and they look gorgeous, and no plastic surgery. So, <laughs> what do you think, Andy? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, everybody, please welcome me in, um, in, in um, having the fabulous Andy Cohen here. Nice to meet you, ladies. Thank you. Wow. She's carrying Moby Dick in her hand. Thank you, ladies. We'll talk contracts after the big show. Um, I uh, appreciate you guys coming. I just want to thank The Strand for having me. I... Love, uh, I've lived in New York 23 years, um, grew up in St. Louis. I, um, when I moved here, I think there were a lot more independent bookstores, but the Strand was always the big daddy of them all. And um, so how excited am I that I not only have a book, but I have a book that I'm signing at the Strand on their 85th birthday. That is incredible. Um, full circle. I love independent anything in New York. And I think, you know, we're, uh, the city is in danger of, you know, losing its, its, um, you know, its, its, its places that make it so special and unique, you know, with the, with the, uh, there are so many chains and everything taking over and everything's turning into a CVS and a Dwayne Reed and, a bank. Um, so anyway, we love the Strand. I love the Strand. My first, uh, it, as I was writing the book, I uh, I looked back on my life in New York, and my favorite chapter is, um, I think my favorite chapter is the one where I come to New York as an intern. At, I come to New York as an intern at CBS News, and it was 1988, and I found an apartment in the Village Voice. And my first day in the apartment, I was living with this gay guy who worked for TWA. And he, um, I, uh, I found his porn and um, broke his VCR with it. And I was so embarrassed. Um, but anyway, 
Why did I start telling that story? Anyway, um, but, but my first day ever in New York, first day ever in New York, who did I see on the street but Andy Warhol? which is so incredible, and I never saw him again, and he died very soon after, but, um, and when I forgot that, and I, when I, re I remembered it as I was almost done with the book, and I said, oh my God, I just have to put that in there because it's so amazing, and I said, I think Andy Warhol would have loved the housewives. I think he would have thought they were hilarious because I think Andy Warhol loved the idea of celebrity, and also he was kind of a sociologist in a weird way, and I think what I love about the housewives is that they are sociology of the rich a little bit. I, you know, it's like if you, if, if we put one of those episodes in a time capsule, you might say, wow, this is how a certain group of rich people in a certain city lived at that certain time. And so I, I just, I love it that I saw Andy Warhol on that day. And I really, I would love, I love the idea, the fantasy in my mind that Andy Warhol would have done you know, Vicky Gunvalson or something, a Warhol of Vicky Gunvalson. Vicky would, and actually, I think Teresa once said she didn't want to pay fifty thousand dollars for a Picasso, which was hilarious because, of course, it would be a lot more expensive. Um, anyway, I am very excited about the book. I hope you all um, get one. I hope I can sign it for you right over here. And um, I, you know, these are this. It's you know, it's it's my story, and it's really the story of a dream coming true for me. I grew up in St. Louis. I always dreamed of New York. I always dreamed of working in TV. I always dreamed of, I dreamed that I could maybe come out of the closet and be accepted and be loved for who I was, but I didn't think that that was going to happen. I really didn't. And uh, so the story of how that happened is, is, is in the book too. And just, you know, this, the, the big but, the big but, of all the jokes in my book is me because I made such a fool of myself in so many different ways as I, as I worked my way up the ladder in TV. 10 years at CBS News, I've been at Bravo for eight, I was in a small cable channel for four. And during those times, I've, had, I've met so many of my idols. I have made an ass of myself to so many people. I have lied, I have done the wrong things, but somehow it has all worked out and I think, you know, my mouth has been my greatest asset and my biggest Achilles heel. But it all worked out. And this is the story of how that happened. And I hope you like it. And I just want to um, raise a glass to the strand. I need a glass. Um, there's some water over here. Maybe I'll just... We do? Oh, good. Oh, good. Wow, a little actual booze. I think the drink, if there was a drinking word of the night, it would be strand, right? So every time you hear that word. Um, and uh, let's just raise a glass to this wonderful, wonderful place uh, in New York City that still exists and is still special. And many people call it home. And to your family, and to you, sir, thank you for having me, and congratulations to you. To 85 more years, let's keep it independent. Let's stay right here. Let's sell a lot of books. And uh, mazel to the Strand, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, now, I think I am going to come over here and sign some books. So we'll figure out a way to get that line going. Um, and uh, But there's more... There's more show, right? Is there more show? We're going to do a raffle right now. Are we going to do the raffle for my show? Oh, my God, can I pick it? Um, let me say this. Oh, good. Let me say this. It is impossible to get into this freaking clubhouse because it is so small. And I've been on this book tour, and everyone's like, how can I be a bartender in the clubhouse? How can I go to the clubhouse? How can I be a bartender in the clubhouse? You, it's impossible. But so I am so excited that um, that we're going to do this because we. This is very special. We just there's there's uh, there are I think 18 seats in the clubhouse. I see some side ponytails, by the way. They look good. What a what a. 
My favorite bookstore in St. Louis is Left Bank Books. Um, it's great. It's in the Central West End. It's another independent bookstore. I mean, I lived, when I first moved to New York, by the way, on the Upper West Side, and I used to love Shakespeare and Company. And it's amazing. I mean, that's like a distant memory. I mean, it's just crazy that these places don't exist, and it's just nuts. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's my favorite book. What's your favorite bookstore in St. Louis? You City Library? Oh, really? That's cute. No, I've never, I've not, uh, I haven't been there. But I was a Clayton kid. That doesn't make sense. Anyone else have any questions, by the way? I'll take a question. No? All right. That's cool. My favorite housewife? I don't have one because the truth is, no, but you know what? I'm all of their bosses. So it would be very uncool to say, oh, this one, I choose this one over everybody else. Oh, good, oh my God, look at this amazing cake. That is an amazing, gorgeous cake. Is it a book or is it a cake? What is it? Yes. Would we ever make the Housewives International? You know what, we have um, sold the format. There is a Real Housewives of Israel, airing in Israel. There is a Real Housewives of Greece airing in Greece. Um, so it does exist. It's a Real Housewives of Vancouver, actually, too. Uh, which, but none of those really, we don't produce them. We don't have, no way. Oh, my God. My buddy Jerry O'Connell's here, everybody. The great, talk about New York City, you know, man. Wow. That's so, I love that. Um, Anyway, yeah, so that's the deal with that. Any other questions? Yes, sir. How am I going to celebrate my birthday Saturday? Thanks for knowing it's my birthday Saturday. Um, I am going to celebrate it by, I'm going to be in Las Vegas hosting the Miss USA pageant on Sunday. And so Saturday, I am going to um, rehearse. And then I'm going to go out. My, you know what? My, my parents are going to come to Vegas. My dad is titillated by the idea of seeing all those pageant ladies up close. So, and, my, and he was like, I, you know, that would be cool to go to the Miss USA pageant. And my mom said, no, it wouldn't. That is ridiculous. If you read my book, you'll see my mom's the best character in my book. But um, so their comment, she goes, we don't need to go to that. I, and my dad's like, well, I actually would like to go. So they're coming, they are coming to the pageant, and we're going to, that's how. Thank you, though, for knowing that. I appreciate it. Yes. What happened to the Housewives of Boston? That never really existed. I went to school in Boston. I like the idea of it. Um, Miami, we're shooting right now. You meant D.C. We, we decided not to move forward with D.C. I love that show, though, and I saw them all. I was at a book signing. <gasps> Is this the raffle? Oh, my God. Okay, so am I picking six? Just one. Oh, I'm picking three because people can... Just one. Okay, this is for... Um, to come to watch What Happens Live, the ticket is 381-398. Is that anybody here? Anybody? No? And they didn't write their name on the back. Oh. 381-398. Anybody? What do we do if they're not here? Pick another one? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys still are in it. Oh, my God. I'm having a cocktail with you, whoever it is. Okay. 381-417. Anybody? 38. You? Oh, my God. It's my neighbor. And do you not live in my building? Oh my God, excellent. Is that hilarious? That's, how New York is that, by the way? We say hello to each other in the elevator. Oh my God, I'll see you at the clubhouse. That's great. Now, is that for all of them? That's, so that's two. Okay, that's two people. So you can bring a friend. Okay, this is for a book bag for Jennifer Egan's favorite books. This is cool, too. 381-378. That's you! Oh, yay, she got it. 
Okay. And then is there one more thing? Oh, now it's my tickets again. Okay. Okay. This is for two more tickets. So we're doing six total. I'm really, is that what we're doing? Yes, yeah, six total. Okay. Okay. Okay, I really switched it around. I just want everybody to know. Okay. 381 429. Yeah! Okay, you're coming. I'll see you in the clubhouse. Here's your little winnings. That is cool. Oh my God. See, people really win. Okay, now what am I pulling for? Am I supposed to be doing all this? Am I overstepping my welcome? This is a tote bag of Dave Egger's favorite books. This is cool. This is cool. I love Dave Egger's. 381496. Which of you eggheads won this? You did. Cool. Okay. We have the winner back here. My man in the cool John Lennon shades. Right there. Okay, here it comes. Now, do I pick another one? This is, okay. This is our last Watch What Happens Live, okay? Okay. So, I will say, if you have a lot of money, I'm announcing something tonight that's going to go up on Charity Buzz where you can pay, um, where you can pay to be a um, bartender on Watch What Happens Live, which is huge. And it, the proceeds are going to my charity, uh, Friends Indeed, that I'm on the board of. Okay. Okay, here we go. 381-418. Anybody? 381-418. Okay, if they're not here, that means I pick another. Okay. I'm picking another. We're all still in it. We are all still in it. The ball is still in play. Okay. What happened? Oh, okay. Here's another one. 381 406. Anybody? You? All right. I'll see you. In Do you care? Did you want it? You wanted the Dave Eggers books. She didn't want it. Maybe you can part. Okay, you do want it. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, last one. Oh, Fran Leibowitz's favorite books. This is good. That lady knows a good book. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. 381-482. There you go. Is that you? Red shirt? You got Fred Leibowitz's favorite books right here in a book bag, too. And you get to keep the book bag, right? Yeah, he gets the book bag, too. This man right here in the red shirt. Thank you. Okay, are you done with me? Oh, I get to cut the cake. Oh, my God, look at how crazy... Sorry. Oh, first we sing. Let's sing happy birthday to the Strand. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Strand. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Fred is the manager. Um, I want to introduce um, Adam Gopnik the author of a lot of wonderful books, which I'm sure you've all read, Paris the Moon and others. Uh, he is a writer for The New Yorker, a contributor, and he wants to say a few words about The Strand. So please welcome Adam Gopnik. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ooh. Well, I, I won't be long. Uh, Jessica asked me if I could say a few words about the Strand. I think I said a few words about the Strand the last time we celebrated its birthday, which must have been its 80th, about five years ago, obviously. Um, I wanted just to say that uh, this crowd needs no convincing of the importance of this institution or of great bookstores generally, but the world seems to need some convincing about their importance. So let me just say quickly, the reason why the Strand is essential to our education, and even more why it's essential to our city, I think, is because of, first for our education, because of the principle of the book beside the book. Um, you can go online, you can go anywhere, and you can be told what books are like the books you've bought, but you will never see 
the missing book beside the book. In uh, my youth, I used to come here and wander around, and always the most interesting book I would find was the book beside the book I was searching for. <laughs> Not the book you came to look for, but the one right next to it. Not the book by Henry James, but the book by Randall Jarrell. <laughs> Not the book uh, by Evelyn Wall, but the book by P.G. Woodhouse. Not the book, <laughs> you can extend this game for yourself indefinitely, but those were the books that mattered most to me. And that's something that you cannot reproduce. Thank you. That's something that you can't reproduce mechanically. You can't reproduce it digitally. That's an experience that depends on the beauties of browsing. We've lost all the record stores where that was possible. Fortunately, we're still blessed to have bookstores like this great one. New books and old books sit side by side, and where you can always find the book beside the book. The other reason I think that we have to celebrate and raise a glass to an institution like the Strand on this wonderful 85th birthday doesn't have so much to do with our education as it does for me with our city and our idea of what urbanism is and what city life ought to be. The things that make city life, and particularly New York City life, so distinctive isn't just that we have a lot of great public places, which we do, like uh, the New York Public Library, like Lincoln Center, like Central Park, just have a new anthology about Central Park and its beauties. Those are wonderful things, public places. And of course, where we have 8 million private places. But one of the great things that cities have, modern cities had, are private public places. Places that are run for a profit, places that are entrepreneurial in impulse, like bookstores, like uh, record stores, like little odd restaurants. Uh, and that at the same time serve an essential public service. They make us, they offer us things that we can't find elsewhere. Beg pardon? <laughs> and that invention of the private public realm, something I wrote a great deal about in my last book, The Table Comes First, about the making of the restaurant. That invention of the private public realm, where you can be both anonymous and engaged, where you can be by yourself and yet be in the presence of other people, that's something that's only possible in places like this. So I'd ask you to raise your glass, if you would, if you have a glass, or if you merely are sipping water as I am, to another 85 years of the Strand, both because it brings us the book beside the book, and also because it gives us the joy of a place that is simultaneously, utterly private, a place for self-discovery, and totally public, open to all. Thanks so much. Here's to the Strand. <laughs>